What's up guys, Kale here and welcome back to another episode of How To Rip. Today I'm going to go with the new format again. I'm going to take a bunch of footage from uh, my surf coaching and I'm going to analyse it and give you guys some, uh, I guess, more appropriate examples of some mistakes that we go through and uh, analyse everything so that you guys can learn from it and surf better. Whilst you're here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, check out my other surf tutorial channel uh, at Kale's Broccoli on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram. Um, hey, little heads up, I'm coming to California in February with my documentaries. Uh, I've got a bunch of meetings and stuff, but I also want to do uh, some film screenings and uh, maybe even do a surf meetup. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know to stay tuned on that. Maybe join me on Instagram. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is back and bottom turns. This is something that I think a lot of people get stuck with. This challenging position of looking up at the top of the wave from being down low and also having your back to the lip. It can be a little bit difficult, but I think the main mistake that people make is that they stay too straight their legs are just too straight and they don't bend enough. Uh, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions here with when you say you need to bend your bend your legs, a lot of people just sort of bend their body and hunch their body over. When if you look at an appropriate backhand bottom turn, the upper body is actually really strong. We still see that nice strong banana shape in the back. And then um, that actually, the, the fold and the bending actually happens. We fold at the hips a little bit, so that the belly is actually um, between our knees almost, but the bend is happening in the knees. So the knees are holding and absorbing all that power that we've presumably got from the top of the wave, uh, and we're going to unleash that at the top of the lip. If we actually look at a more appropriate bottom turn here. We see that uh, this is actually me as I'm going into this bottom turn I'm opening up that front arm so you can see the front arm actually the front palm flipping and because biomechanically that actually helps to lift and open up this whole front chest area and that's going to allow the shoulder girdle to rotate and then the head is going to be able to look further up to the lip to actually perform that turn. Now, here's something that's really key. We saw just previously with this clip here that the surfer did the bottom turn quite well, has mastered the position of the bottom turn. However, it's the change, the rotation, that she hasn't yet mastered, and as a result, there's no turn that occurs. So it's important to note that as this position opens us up, we then have to close down and go in the opposite direction with the shoulder girdle and the head to actually initiate the turn back down the wave, as you can see here. It's getting comfortable in these potentially uncomfortable situations and making it feel normal that's going to really allow us to progress in this way. Skateboarding is a really good one to, to help with this. I, I find that um, you know using the right boards, you can, you can open up uh, and practice over and over again until kinesthetically it actually feels quite right to be able to do those backside bottom turns. Um, but I think it is like a normal stumbling point for a lot of people. That, uh, that's what I want to point out is that this is normal for someone to, to struggle with. I still struggle with it. I think one of the biggest game-changing moments for me was when I was talking to a pro surfer in San Diego and he said a backside bottom turn you want to almost feel like you're sitting in a chair. Um, that's how low you're getting on that bottom turn. Um, and it becomes really important to master that bottom turn, especially if we start going into bigger waves because we're really trying to control and harness speed as opposed to generate it as well. The next thing I want to talk about is the utilization of the wave. This is something that comes up a lot, I think, in uh, what we do. Um, this is the, the phenomenon known as surfing out of the power zone. Um, if we look at what a lot of uh, beginner to intermediate surfers do is they'll take off and they'll keep their board in that lower portion of the wave. Let's break the wave up into three, into thirds. Uh, what we really want is for the surfer to actually be moving between all, th all thirds, all the thirds. 
I don't even know how to, how to say that properly. Um, but they want to move up and down the face of the wave, uh, but they want to stay up in the top two-thirds mostly to build power because that's where most of the power is going to come from. Now, fair enough, if you're on a really steep wave, uh, it's a lot of power, you might be able to spend a little bit more time than normal uh, in that lower uh, third of the wave because you'll have enough speed to penetrate through it and back up to the top of the lip. But as we can see here, it's actually quite a limiting place to be on the wave. It really slows us down. We saw some slight corrections here, um, and the cue for this particular surfer was to, as soon as you take off, look to the lip. Because as we've talked about before, your eyes determine where you go on a wave when you look to the top of the lip as soon as you take off. And in fact, I actually say that as you're paddling in, you should be looking to the top of the lip. Um, but I didn't want to overburden the surfer either. I just said as soon as you pop up, look to the top of the wave, look to the lip, uh, and, and make your movements get you there. Um, and what I found was that there was a good adjustment and we saw some nice sort of smoother surfing. Um, I dare say if this surfer had got like another good wave, uh, it would have been a totally different story. Utilizing the entire wave is something that's really attractive to watch. If we look at my friend Nick here, who's been in a How to Rip video before, um, you can see he really overemphasizes that movement and really uses the wave um, to its absolute maximum. I mean, if you look at that drive up and down, just really uh, maximizing what you can get out of a one foot wave. We see it here as well. I start off with a bit of a, a big cut back there and then sort of move from, from that bottom part of the wave after a, a slight adjustment there straight up into another turn. Um, so essentially what we're doing is building up our power points at the top of the wave, then we're um, adjusting our line in order to approach the top of the wave like this with a more vertical and radical uh, line. And this ends up being uh, a pretty nice wave. The next thing I really want to talk about, this is something that's huge, it always tends to come up, is the first bottom turn. And it's hardly even a bottom turn. The turn I'm talking about is a speed generation oomph. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it because it's kind of like a, an urging forward movement um, that we tend to do when we don't have enough inherent power built into the wave. So unless we're surfing like a four foot hollow sort of wave that gives us, gives us enough speed to actually just unload without any sort of uh, speed generation movements, um, this turn is gonna be really important. So essentially it's this one right here. As the surfer gets to the bottom, they do a little urge forward and it's really a half a bottom turn. But what I like to see is more effort and more oomph in this turn. We'll call it the oomph turn. Um, and we see it here, it's really subtle. So watch this moment right here where you see a lick of spray come out the tail of my board. Right there, it's just a tiny little speed pump to actually encourage myself forward down the wave. Uh, to add on, say, an extra 5%, 10% of speed in order to approach the section. And this is purely just a speed generation maneuver to get out in front of the lip uh, in order to perform your desired maneuver. What I would like to see is that actually occurring for this surfer here, who took off in a really nice spot, but didn't undercapitalize on this section because that little oomph turn was not enough to actually get her out in front of the lip, in front of the white water, onto the face in order to explode that power into a big turn. It's something that I think we do need to work on is, uh, and we can make it as subtle as possible because obviously a lot of surfing is this pursuit of aesthetic uh, pleasantness, if you will. Um, and I think doing that turn can look ugly if we try and overdo it. Um, by making it subtle, we sort of give ourselves not only an extra boost of speed, but also this nice element of flow into our surfing. Um, essentially, you know, unless you're surfing waves above three to four foot, we're always trying to, generally speaking, get more speed um, because we can go more critical, we can be more in control with that, with that speed. Uh, it's only the waves get bigger when you don't have to do that 
that um, you can get away with just going straight into a nice critical bottom turn on a wave, something like this. there we go I hope that helped you guys out there's so much more I can cover in this sort of series I was thinking actually um, I did some coaching up on the Gold Coast as in as in I got coached by an elite coach up there and I was thinking about using that footage to actually analyze my own surfing because there are so many things I can pick out my own surfing as well that are um, not quite up to scratch and I'd love to uh, work on so perhaps I'll do that in the next episode let me know what you think um, and make sure you join me on my other surfing tutorial channel uh, at Kale's Broccoli and on Instagram as well and let me know in the comments uh, what else you want to see, what else should I talk about. Um, I'm, as I said, coming to California in February. Uh, this will be the last video I put out before the end of the year. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I'll see you guys soon. You, thanks for tuning in.